good stuff okay i'm joined this morning by mike samuels online coach uh you can find his website i've got it on my other screen here for looks like i'm looking off there so www.healthylivinghealthylifting.com so make sure you go and check that out and morning mike and thanks for agreeing to have a chat with us it's a real pleasure and thanks for taking the time out to do it and maybe you could tell the viewers or whatever you want to call them a bit about yourself Gary, no worries, mate. Uh, um, yeah, basically, I've been in the fitness industry coming up on about nine years now. Started off as a gym instructor, then qualified as personal trainer. Did that free, uh, in a gym, first of all, for about two years. Then went freelance for about four years. Still do a bit of PT, but I've moved more into the online side of things now. So I'm kind of a fitness writer, blogger, online coach, and And that's kind of my journey over the last nine years, I guess. Good stuff. So, been in the industry a while, then. So, seen a few changes, I guess. Just a few, yeah. I think even with the uh, with the nine years or so, it's been um, been quite a roller coaster, certainly in terms of well, everything sort of diet and training based, really. <laughs> okay. Well, as we've mentioned, diet there obviously it's quite a key aspect. Um, so, where did you learn your nutrition? Where did you get your nutrition education from? Well, I think first thing would have probably been from like issues of men's health and men's fitness back when I was kind of 15 or 16 and just getting into, um, well, running was my first choice for uh, for getting into sport, really. So would have been kind of, yeah, that sort of stuff, like your typical magazine bits and pieces. Then probably moved into more of like the flex magazine and muscle and fitness type stuff. Um, I suppose kind of transitioned on to then websites like T Nation and obviously as part of personal training course did some things in the way of nutrition wasn't kind of you know the most comprehensive but in all honesty it wasn't too bad a foundation really um some stuff i don't agree with in there but on the whole um uh, when i qualified it was actually not too bad now i think from then i got i suppose sidetracked in a way um into things like paleo and very low carb approaches and things like that because i saw people raving about them and assumed that these guys were supposed experts and it must be the way to go um and then for a while that's what i did probably about two years or so that was my general approach and approach with clients as well which obviously is the most sensible or sustainable type of you know, way of dieting or way of living even um but then again gradually sort of came around a bit more and started to get a bit more about flexibility and moderation and looking into uh, more of the actual science rather than the kind of pseudo science out there um and yeah I took the uh, precision nutrition course so i did that um and pretty much just started following guys on the internet so people like so people like alan arrogan um john berardi's type um stuff say so precision nutrition was a big part for me and just generally kind of trying to read a bit more or and get slightly more educated, really. So, Lyle McDonald was another one who I follow quite a lot, uh, Lane Norton, and be trying to be a bit more discerning about things rather than just take stuff at face value and think that, oh, that guy's got a six pack, so therefore he must know about nutrition. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, kind of a lot of it's been been sort of self taught, but also kind of had some some formal education as well. Yeah. So, how, how do you think kind of nutrition education's really changed though, over those nine years? Where have you seen the kind of changes from where you started out to where you are kind of today? In terms of formal education, I think there's, well, there's obviously so much more now. I think a few years back it would have been just what you did on your personal training course. And then I know the company I did mine with offered uh, an extended course. It was kind of two days on nutrition and had like a one day sports performance, nutrition qualification and things like that. But obviously, not so comprehensive by any means um i think unless you're willing to kind of go to degree level with it there wasn't that option to really delve into detail and look at the science and studies and, and all of that and certainly with nutrition for like body composition kind of nothing on that at all whereas now with formal education obviously you've got things you've know, got courses that people can do in their own time from home and that are actually based on kind of stuff that works and more of us now getting into the I suppose more niche areas so you've got people who specialize in work with their beast clients people who are more about fat loss 
certain aspects of performance. And I think for the guys and girls, in my opinion. Great, oh, cheers for that. So if if you were kind of, what route would you kind of, an aspiring PT, because I think most PT courses are very, very similar in terms of what the nutrition input is. What route would you kind of advise an aspiring PT to take to improve their nutrition knowledge? Because obviously you used, from what you've just said there, you've used a lot of different sources. So for somebody that's just qualified as a PT and is now looking to kind of enhance their nutrition knowledge, what advice would you kind of give to them? I think the first step would be to, uh, I suppose, just take it quite steady. So like we say to a lot of our clients, to look into lose fat, don't try and do everything all at once and take on a load of stuff. That would be my main advice. And set yourself up with some goals that you can stick to in terms of learning. So don't try and commit to reading three studies and you know, a, a book a week and doing all the courses out there. You know, there's time to kind of build it up and actually you're better off getting a bit steadier and taking it slower um, and taking everything in. So I think a lot of people say that you know, I've done this course and read these papers and subscribe to this journal. And they probably do, but in actual fact, they don't kind of take it in and don't try and apply it with clients. Mm-hmm. So for me, it would be a thing of, you know, set yourself like a learning goal. So say you're going to read two articles a week, or I think courses are fantastic. Um, if they kind of take at your own pace, and again, with that, you can get into them. You can you know, take it as fast or as slow as you want to break it down into chunks and just do a bit of learning maybe every day maybe every couple of days just give yourself kind of 30 to 40 minutes here and there to really try and take it in and i'd also say as well don't just as i did originally take stuff at face value and assume that something must be right i think you've got to take things and look at a variety of different sources um as well as sort of thinking well how does this apply to me and how can i use this with my clients because for instance i said the the main qualification i did probably about four or five years ago, was the Precision Nutrition one, which had aspects that were really good, but at the same time had stuff that I didn't really agree with. And it's not to say that's wrong, but certainly for the people I, I was working with, I thought, I'm not sure that's going to work 100% with them, or actually I've got better results with a higher percentage of people doing something slightly different. Um, so I suppose just that idea of kind of taking it steady and doing something where you can work at your own pace is good. Uh, and another thing, I suppose, it's kind of similar to how we would coach clients would be have something where there's some accountability as well. So if you're investing in something, if there's something where someone's checking up on you, you've got group support to go through it as well. You've got kind of regular reminders to, to keep your knowledge up to date, then I think that's critical too. So there's kind of a lot of similarities in learning nutrition as there is in kind of practicing good nutritional habits as well. That's great. I mean, I like the idea of setting learning goals. I, I don't think enough people do that. And I agree as well about like, being sceptical. I just don't, just because somebody says it, well, don't believe it. Go and have a dig round and, and see for yourself. See if you can kind of find other evidence that supports that. So I think they're two really good tips. Uh, the learning goals, 100%, because that can, that can kind of keep you on track. And nutrition changes so much that if you don't do that, you can very quickly find yourself well well beyond what the actual knowledge is, which is a problem. So some great tips there. How do you incorporate nutrition into your online coaching? Because obviously that's kind of your, one of your main things there. So how do you incorporate that with clients? Well, I think it's, I suppose I like the phrase, meeting a client where they're at. So unless you're working with elite athletes, which, yeah, some people might do, and for some coaches out there, that is the only person they work with. It's, um, and you can get them to see you know, more, or less, in theory, more or less anything that you want to, although there's the idea that at the same time, elite athletes are kind of up there as well because of their genetics and stuff, and sometimes they're not the people who do everything. But leaving that aside, I think go rather than imposing your exact optimal approach on a client, you have to kind of try and get them to to get to that slowly and gradually. So for me, I'll always start with kind of questionnaires and stuff, whether it's, you know, no matter what the client's goal is or where they're at, what they've done in the past, we'll work with, yeah, what they enjoy doing and what they're doing at the moment. 
obviously for me, I'm a fan of kind of a flexible dieting approach. So I'm going to always try and get people to the point where they're tracking macros and monitoring their food intake, weighing most of their food as well. But for a lot of people, that isn't sustainable straight from the off. So you've got to kind of get them to, to go to that a bit slower, perhaps. Because, again, there's the idea that if you try and do too much too soon, there's a massive amount of overwhelm. And someone's more likely to think, oh, I can't do all of that, therefore I'm not going to bother at all. So for me, it's getting some data to start with. So asking you know, what they're doing for nutrition at the moment, asking for a food diary, or if they are already kind of tracking and monitoring things, asking what they've been doing in the last, months, the last three months, the last six months, all things like that. Um, and then building a plan based around what I believe to be the optimal method for them, which, as I said, is kind of flexible dieting. But at the same time, I'm not forcing that all on them at once. So they might just, you know, we might come up with a, I wouldn't say a meal plan as such, but like a template they can follow if they're completely new to dieting and just work on some healthy habits with them. Again, I think it's a mistake that a lot of coaches make of giving someone a, a diet or a, you know, some calculations that might be 100% perfect and get fantastic results. But at the same time, if the client's not going to stick to those, then they're going to get no results, basically. So meeting a client where they're at and then try to gradually transition them towards what you think is going to be the best approach for them. Um, and just having regular contact as well. I think too many people give a client a diet and then, don't kind of keep in contact with them, don't keep them accountable, don't answer questions. And a lot of people, nutrition is quite confusing and scary. So you've got to be there to help them out kind of every step of the way, really. How do clients keep in touch with you? Do you use kind of one one route or do you give them kind of many options? Yeah, a few different options. So generally it's email and most of my clients check in once or twice a week with a full update and then they can email in between if they want to. Um, do a private Facebook group as well. So for just general kind of questions or recommendations or someone says, you know, I'm after a new protein bar, what, what do people like? I find that's better. It's a bit more informal. Um, and I do Skype as well. So it includes Skype in different packages at the same time as someone's struggling with something. I think a lot of the time it's best just to jump on a call for two minutes and you can explain something really well and much more clearly than you can in a like 10 paragraph email to them. So, yeah, generally I like email, but at the same time, other forms of communication I think work well. And I suppose it's kind of working with what a client likes too. Um, some people I find do respond best to having a chat via Skype or on the phone rather than an email update. Great. Um, so when you set up this business, what, what skills have you kind of had to develop to kind of work online as opposed to face-to-face? How, how do you see that you've developed different skills to do that? I think, obviously, writing, because conveying what you want to say in what words, uh, sorry, conveying what you would kind of speak into typed format can be quite difficult. Mm -hmm. So definitely doing that. And also kind of having a balance, I think, because sometimes you can, I suppose, give a client some advice or something, and if you type it out, it can sound incredibly harsh and almost like an order, whereas if you said it face-to-face to them, then actually you'd be saying quite a friendly way, quite a supportive way. So making sure that what you want to say comes across in the way that you want it to is quite a big one and still don't get it right 100% of the time. Hence why, as I said a second ago, sometimes just getting on the call is easier because a client can see that you're not actually angry with them when you're just giving them some advice. I think that's a, a big one. Um, and I think the fact that I find with one-on-one clients Certainly in the beginning of online coaching, I think one-on-one -on -one clients uh, wouldn't say more honest because that makes it sound like online people you know, bend the truth. But I think it's easier to get more information from a one-on-one -on -one client if you're having a session with them or sat down having a meeting with them. Um, and so that's why I'm kind of quite open and upfront with all online clients that I'm never going to get angry if they've gone off the rails. You know, but I do need to know so that we can help them and get them back on track, really. So... Uh, at the end of the day, I'm not a coach who's ever going to check out someone for doing something badly because I think if someone's got some goals, then if they decide to do something that's not conducive to that, that's you know, it's not my place to get angry with them. It's my place to motivate them and give them some tactics to get back on track and be there so they feel like they've got that accountability, um, but not tell them off, so to speak. So I think the 
basically the art of kind of conveying what you want to say is a big one that I think I wouldn't say everyone, but I think most people should do some one-on-one coaching before looking at going into um, online nutrition right. coaching. I think just, that's just my think, opinion. Yeah, so you just don't think that it's a good idea to jump straight into online if you haven't got that kind of experience behind you. I think it's really important. I think it can be done. There's a few people who can do it, but on the whole, I think most people should get some face-to-face practice. Um, maybe not in even in PTC or nutrition coaching, but I just think having a job where you're talking to people, I think learning yeah. to talk to people as their people is really, really important. Great. Okay, so one last question to wind up. Where do you see the future of personal training and nutrition in the industry? I think it's really promising, to be honest. I think more people than ever are kind of looking to get into it, and I think that's a good thing. Obviously, there's always due to the nature of qualifications now being, I suppose a lot of personal training companies have recognised the demand of, of getting into industry, so uh, making courses shorter and slashing prices. But I think the people who just go into it to make the money quickly find out that actually that's not not what the industry is about at all. And I think there will always be that. So we've kind of just got to accept that. And those of us who are actually concerned more about clients and concerned about education, as long as we keep doing our thing, then the industry's only going to grow and get better. And I just think the amount of education that's out there at the moment is pretty overwhelming, to be honest. Um, I said it's easy to get overwhelmed, but, like, but the way everyone's going, you know, people are adopting more of an evidence-based approach. People are kind of enjoying geeking out on nutrition and training as well. I think that's really awesome. So to me, it's kind of going in the right direction for sure. Um, the number of general public now who have my fitness pal and can talk about macros and calories is growing, um, which is kind of pretty cool, really. So I think it's, uh, it's going to go in places. So you think we're in, we're in a healthy industry then, possibly? <laughs> it's getting there, yeah. I think there's still a lot of nonsense. But yeah. I think provided that, you know, I suppose if they do a good job and make sure people know about it, it's kind of the best, best route to take. So provided people in the know keep giving out good content and some free advice and you know, building up, their reputation then that's only going to do good things really great well thanks for taking the time to talk to us today mike um just to reiterate right, your website www.healthylivinghealthylifting.com um you've got i know you've got a home study course there what's that about tell the audience uh, that got your basically mind. just sort of uh, this intro to flexible dieting so it's um sort of a series of ebooks first one is kind of the premise of flexible dieting like calories, macros, everything like that. A uh, troubleshooter, so you know, hitting plateaus, what's doing, reading out, um, things like that. And then the third, third part is general FAQ, so again, it's kind of some more of the intricate details. So, yeah, it's a nice sort of simple course and just a good way for people to kind of board a rigid, restricted diet to get to a flexible, sustainable approach. Great. Okay, so some really useful information on that website, so pop along there, folks. Great. Thanks for taking the time to do that today, Mike. Much appreciated. I know you're a busy man. That's all right, Gary. Enjoy it. Thanks for having me on.